Welcome back to our channel, where we unravel the darkest corners of human behavior. Today, we dive into a story that will make you question everything you know about love, trust, and betrayal. A husband hailed as a hero, but was he saving his family or setting the stage for the perfect crime? Buckle up, this is the twisted tale of Mark Winger. Imagine the weight of the world crashing down on you in a single moment. That's what Mark Winger must have felt, or so he claimed, on the afternoon of August 29, 1995. The clock hands seemed to freeze at 4.27 p.m., the exact moment Mark dialed 911. His voice, tinged with desperation, echoed through the line, A man is killing my wife. The words were chilling, a cry for help that would set off a chain of events, forever altering the lives of everyone involved. But what was really happening behind the closed doors of the Winger household? Was it a desperate husband trying to save his wife, or was it the opening act of a much darker play? When the police arrived, they were met with a scene straight out of a horror movie. Donna Winger lay on the ground, her life hanging by a thread. Her head struck seven times with a hammer. Beside her was Roger Harrington, also in a critical state, with two gunshot wounds to his head. The air was thick with tension and unanswered questions. Who was Roger Harrington? Why was he there? And most importantly, was Mark Winger a distraught husband or a master manipulator? As both Donna and Roger were rushed to the hospital, where they would later succumb to their injuries, the house was sealed off. The story that would unfold was far more complex and sinister than anyone could have initially imagined. Stick around, because what seemed like a clear-cut case of self-defense begins to unravel into a web of lies, deceit, and cold-blooded planning. Was justice served? Or was this the perfect crime? You won't believe what comes next. Mark Winger, a man who had seemingly built a life of dreams, stood in the midst of this nightmare, his face flushed with a mix of relief and anguish. He was the one who had pulled the trigger, ending Roger Harrington's life. But why? According to Mark, he was the hero of this tragic tale, a loving husband who had come to his wife's rescue. Picture this, Mark, engrossed in his workout, jogging on the treadmill in the basement, suddenly hears unsettling noises from upstairs. His instincts kick in. He rushes up, only to find his adopted baby, Bailey, alone in the master bedroom. His heart sinks. Where is Donna? Mark recounts hearing more noises, this time coming from the dining room. He grabs his handgun from the nightstand, a .45 caliber semi-automatic, and cautiously moves towards the sound. And there, in the dimly lit hallway, he witnesses a scene that would haunt anyone for a lifetime. Roger Harrington, a man he had never met, swinging a hammer at his wife, Donna. Without a second thought, Mark fires. Once, twice, Roger collapses, but not before Mark fires again, ensuring he would never rise. It was a split-second decision, a desperate act to save the woman he loved, or so he claimed. But as the police began their investigation, inconsistencies started to emerge. The hammer, covered in blood, belonged to Mark and Donna. The gun, too, was Mark's. And then there was the question that hung in the air like a dark cloud. How did Mark know Roger's name before the police even told him? Something wasn't adding up. The story was fraying at the edges, and as we dig deeper, you'll see that the man who claimed to be a hero might just be the villain in disguise. Roger Harrington wasn't just a random stranger who had broken into the Winger home. No, his connection to Donna was more unsettling. And it all began with a car ride, a car ride that would set the stage for this grim tale. Six days before that fateful day, Donna had returned from a trip to visit her parents in Florida. She was picked up at the St. Louis airport by Roger, a driver for a limousine company. But this was no ordinary ride. Roger was talkative, perhaps overly so, and his conversation took a dark turn. He spoke of hearing voices, a voice he named Dom, urging him to commit violent acts. Donna was terrified. She felt trapped in a moving vehicle with a man who seemed unstable, even dangerous. She couldn't wait to get home, to the safety of her family. And when she did, she recounted the harrowing experience to Mark, who was visibly concerned. Mark told the police that Donna had been receiving strange phone calls ever since that ride, calls she believed were from Roger. Mark even reported Roger to the limousine company, leading to his suspension. Could this have been the trigger that escalated the situation to a deadly encounter? But here's where things get even murkier. Mark knew Roger's name before the police revealed it. He even asked them, is it Roger? How did he know? Was this a calculated setup? A sinister plot masked as a tragic incident? As we peel back the layers, we find that each answer only leads to more questions. And the question that looms largest of all, was Mark Winger the protector he claimed to be, or was he the puppet master of a deadly scheme? On the surface, Mark and Donna Winger seemed like the quintessential American family. They had moved to Springfield, Illinois, for work, and by all accounts, they were happy. Donna was an operating room technician at Memorial Medical Center, and Mark worked as an engineer for the Illinois Department of Nuclear Safety. They had even recently adopted a baby girl, Bailey, fulfilling Donna's dream of becoming a mother. But behind this picture-perfect facade lay a series of struggle. Donna had been distraught over her inability to conceive, a fact that weighed heavily on her. 
the adoption of Bailey had been a bright spot in their lives, a miracle that seemed to promise happier times ahead. Yet, even as they celebrated this new chapter, Mark was harboring secrets, secrets that would later come to light and shatter the illusion of their happy family. He was having an affair with Donna's close friend, Dan Schultz, and what he said to Dan was chilling. It would be easier for us to be together if Donna just died. Could this have been a mere expression of frustration, a momentary lapse in judgment? Or was it a foreshadowing of the dark path that Mark was willing to tread? Dan would later reveal these conversations to the police, adding another layer of complexity to an already convoluted case. Mark's actions following Donna's death only added to the growing suspicions. He quickly moved on, marrying the nanny he had hired to care for Bailey. They had more children and seemed to be building a new life. But could anyone really move on that quickly after such a tragedy, unless they had a reason to want to forget? As we dig deeper, we're left grappling with unsettling questions. Was the Winger family ever what it seemed to be? Or was it all just a carefully constructed lie, designed to hide a much darker truth? Just when it seemed like the dust had settled, the case took an unexpected turn. Four years after the tragic events, Dan Schultz, Donna's close friend and Mark's secret lover, approached the police with a haunting revelation. She had been having an affair with Mark, and during their illicit relationship, he had made some disturbing comments. It would be easier for us to be together if Donna just died. This bombshell confession was enough to make the police reconsider the entire case. They reopened the investigation, but faced a major obstacle. Some of the evidence had gone missing. Despite this setback, they pressed on, determined to get to the bottom of what really happened. The police began to scrutinize Mark's account of that fateful day, comparing it to the crime scene photos. Something didn't add up. The position of the bodies, the direction they were facing, it all contradicted Mark's version of events. This was the first time the police began to suspect that Mark might not be the innocent victim he portrayed himself to be. Further digging led to another shocking discovery. Roger Harrington, the man Mark had shot, had actually been invited to the Winger home. A note with Mark's name, address, and a specific time was found in Roger's car. Why would Roger, who was supposedly stalking and harassing Donna, have an invitation from Mark? As the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, as Mark Winger found himself in the defendant's chair, the courtroom was buzzing with anticipation. The prosecution laid out a compelling case, painting Mark as a man who wanted to rid himself of his wife but keep their adopted baby, Bailey. They argued that Mark saw a golden opportunity in Roger Harrington, a man he could frame for a crime he planned to commit. The prosecution presented the note found in Roger's car as a key piece of evidence. It had Mark's name, address, and a specific time, suggesting that Mark had lured Roger to his home. This was a far cry from the self-defense narrative Mark had initially spun. Diane Schultz took the stand, recounting the unsettling comments Mark had made about wishing Donna were dead. Her testimony sent chills down the spines of those in the courtroom. The prosecution also highlighted the inconsistencies between Mark's account and the crime scene photos, further casting doubt on his innocence. But the defense was ready with their counter-arguments. They portrayed Diane as a woman scorned, furious that Mark had moved on so quickly after Donna's death. They also questioned the reliability of the crime scene photos, suggesting that the paramedics could have moved the body. Despite the defense's efforts, the evidence against Mark was overwhelming. The jury found him guilty of two counts of first-degree murder, sentencing him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. It seemed like justice had finally been served, but the story was far from over. After the gavel came down and Mark was sentenced, you'd think this would be the end of the story. But no, life had other plans. Mark, now behind bars, was still a man full of surprises. While serving his life sentence, he was implicated in a murder-for-hire plot. The target, Diane Schultz, the woman whose testimony had played a crucial role in his conviction. Police discovered 19 pages of handwritten notes outlining Mark's dark fantasies. He wanted to end kidnapped, forced to write a statement recanting her testimony, and then killed. It was as if Mark's capacity for malevolence knew no bounds. But the plot was foiled, and Mark found himself facing additional charges. This time, it was for solicitation of murder. He was found guilty and slapped with an additional 35 years in prison. It was a chilling reminder that sometimes, the danger doesn't end even when justice is served. Meanwhile, Donna's family was left grappling with a reality more horrifying than they could have ever imagined. Her mother, Sarah Jane, and stepfather, Ira Drescher, spoke out, saying how overwhelmed they were by the evidence against Mark. The man who had once been a part of their family had not only killed their daughter but had also plotted to kill again. Even with Mark Winger behind bars, serving a life sentence plus 35 years for his heinous acts, questions still linger. Could this tragedy have been prevented? What signs were missed? And how many lives have been irreversibly shattered in the wake of Mark's malevolence? Diane Schultz was granted immunity for her testimony, but at what cost? She had to live with the knowledge that she was once involved with a man capable of such atrocities. The emotional toll on her is unimaginable.
and she's left questioning her own judgment, forever scarred by her association with Mark. Mark maintains his innocence, a chilling thought that leaves us all uneasy. Is it the delusion of a man who has lost touch with reality, or the calculated move of a master manipulator? Either way, it's a haunting notion that adds another layer of complexity to an already convoluted case. And let's not forget the children. Bailey, who was just a few months old when her adoptive mother was killed, has to grow up with the weight of this family tragedy. What will become of her? And what about Mark and Rebecca's children? They too are innocent victims in this web of deceit and violence. In the years following Mark Winger's conviction, the community of Springfield, Illinois, has had to grapple with the reality that a man they once saw as a respectable engineer and family man was capable of such horror. The case has left an indelible mark on the town, a constant reminder that evil can lurk where you least expect it. Mark's second wife, Rebecca, had to face the unimaginable, realizing the man she married, the father of her children, was a murderer. The psychological impact on her is immeasurable, and the path to healing is long and uncertain. She's left to pick up the pieces of a shattered family all while grappling with the public scrutiny that comes with being married to a man like Mark. Donna's parents, Sarah Jane and Ira Drescher, are left with a void that can never be filled. Their grief is compounded by the betrayal of a man they once considered family. The way he murdered Donna was so vicious and so violent, they told CBS, a statement that encapsulates the nightmare they live every day. Law enforcement too has had to reckon with their initial misjudgment of the case. How did they get it so wrong? Could Donna's life have been saved if they had dug deeper? These are questions that haunt them, adding another layer of tragedy to an already devastating story. As we come to the end of this harrowing journey through the life and crimes of Mark Winger, it's clear that the story doesn't end with a prison sentence. The ripples of his actions continue to affect the lives of those who were unfortunate enough to cross his path. The community, the families involved, and even the law enforcement officers carry the weight of this case like a dark cloud that refuses to disperse. Mark Winger sits behind bars, but the questions remain. What drove a seemingly ordinary man to commit such heinous acts? Is the system flawed, or is evil just that insidious? These are questions that we may never have answers to, but they serve as a chilling reminder to always be vigilant, to never take things at face value. In 2005, Mark was implicated in a murder-for-hire plot, adding another layer of malevolence to his already dark persona. It's a stark reminder that for some, the capacity for evil knows no bounds. He was sentenced to an additional 35 years, sealing his fate but leaving us with an unsettling feeling that lingers. Thank you for joining us on this unsettling journey. While we may never fully understand the depths of human depravity showcased in this story, it serves as a cautionary tale that will haunt us for years to come. Until next time, stay safe and keep questioning the world around you.